Hey everybody, welcome back to Off the Wall. I'm Mike, and I'm joined above me by two very special guests. Uh, on I'm gonna do on this side here, we got my buddy Tushka. What's and up, y'all? On this side here, we got Amara Moses from Bite Size What's Breakdown. Going What's and going on? We're we're talking about a fun little movie that uh, that dropped on Hulu uh, by the name of Prey. This is the like super ultra prequel to the entire Predator franchise brought to us from director Dan Trachtenberg, uh, who has worked on, I mean, Black Mirror. He's worked on The Boys. Uh, he's working on, he worked on The Lost Symbol. So uh, it stars uh, Amber Mid-Thunder mm-hmm. as a surprisingly intriguing uh, uh, heroine to this story. And um, let's, let's start off by just kind of asking you guys, What's your background with the Predator franchise? We'll, we'll start with Amaru. What's 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 your Predator background here? Well, uh, I only have watched all of the Predators, the original ones, two or three years ago because of the family community and this little thing called the Schmodown. Finally saw them yeah. uh, for the first time. I had seen, because we're including it, saw Alien vs. Predator when it came out. I was telling you beforehand, Alien vs. Predator Requiem, I have this small little nice nugget of, of, of joy in my heart because me and my boys went to the theater and laughed our asses off when we saw that back then. So as much as that movie's horrible, uh, I love it just because of the experience and being like, oh shit, I remember watching this. Uh, so I know that, but I've only really seen Predator and Predator 2 uh, one time. And then I think, uh, pre- again, Predators I saw late and The Predator uh, I also saw late, but maybe saw it more than once. So just really purely... Uh, off of just trying to make sure I can answer trivia questions. That's that's my background with with the series. Right, look, the necessity is 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 the food of the soul. I think is the saying. It's not even close to the saying. Uh, Tushka, what about you, man? What's the what's your, yeah. what's your background on Predator? Man, I mean, yeah, huge fan of Predator One. Uh, I actually dug Predator Two. Um, you know, even though you know Glover didn't look like he could really go hand to hand with. Predator, he did somehow. You don't believe so, that you don't believe that, 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 that Murtaugh could catch that thing like that. He's really? too old for this shit, man. He's, He's too, too old, old for it. Shit. <laughs> but uh, but no, I worked at Blockbuster in the two thousands, and so yeah, AVP was coming out, Freddy vs Jason, all those. So yeah, I got to watch it and actually you know found some joy in those. But I then I fell off. I didn't catch uh, Predators plural or the Predator um, or Requiem. So yeah, so there's there's a few that that are in the my gaps, but. Yeah, I was definitely excited for this one, though. Uh, seems, being seems a 200-year-old like, prequel. Seems like the ones you missed were kind of the ones that are, it's kind of okay to miss. Uh, right. It's it's yeah. fine. Um, I, I was telling Amaru before we started, like, like 2018's The Predator from Shane Black. Like, every time I think about it, I, I just, I, 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 my blood churns. Like, I'm just like, God, I hate that movie. Um, and, uh, you know, Predators is fine but forgettable. Predator 2, I do have a soft spot for. Um, and alien versus predator the last 30 minutes are pretty good when there's no talking and no dumb humans and it's just aliens fighting <laughs> right predator. yeah then it's good there there is it's a finale thing was. which is usually a step up in anything you watch so yeah 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 um well and let's let's get into let's get into prey then i i think i like a lot of people when they announced hey we're doing a mm-hmm. ultimate prequel to predator with him taking on basically a native american tribe and i think like a lot of people i was just like why <laughs> why are we doing this but that first trailer came out how did you guys did you did you guys saw that trailer like how did that make you feel tushka how did that make you feel uh it felt, it felt great so for me being native american uh, i'm choctaw i actually worked for my tribe and with a lot of the tribal members um so with us getting a lot more inclusion lately especially on film and accurate film <laughs> representation where it's uh i mean i love daniel day lewis but he's not <laughs> he's not half uh, you know, Iroquois or whichever tribe he was participating with, you know, but, um, right. but, but no, but, but it's, it's just, it's great to see. And, um, and there for a while, I mean, it was West Studi and like one other actor that was doing all the native roles. Now we have dozens, if not hundreds that we're starting to interact with and kind of, uh, be able to see, like kind of participate in that process. So it, it was great. I actually heard, heard the buzz of this a long time ago, just cause a lot of in the native community, they were talking about it. Like, you know, Comanche language, you know, pretty much mostly Comanche, Comanche as far as actors. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we were excited for it. And then when the trailer came out, it looked beautiful. Um, you know, we can talk probably talk about the specifics as far as CG and other stuff here in a bit. But, uh, yeah, we were stoked. 
Yeah, no, I was a little shocked that Adam Beach didn't have a cameo in this because it seems like he's one of the other ones that's always yeah. playing a. Yeah, a you know, I think Suicide Squad really killed his career. <laughs> and then New Mutants, right after that. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, Amru, what about you, man? Like, what were what when you first heard about this? How were you feeling? How were you feeling when you saw that trailer? I I was really neutral on Predator in general. I actually I enjoyed Predators. Um, and, and then the Predator was fun enough, but I knew it wasn't good. So, like, I legit was, like, neutral. I saw it. I was like, you know what? That could be interesting. I avoided the trailer. Uh, okay. I just heard the buzz after the trailer that it looks good. So, I was like, all right, I'm watching it, one. Need to know it for trivia because that just kind of guides a lot of my movie life on top of whether or not I want to see it or not. Um, but I'd started to hear good things. And truthfully, uh, Amber Midthunder being the lead, I was like, I'm in because I loved her in Legion. And she was great. Okay. Um, uh, and she was one of the main sources of action uh, in the TV show Legion. So I was like, when I saw she was in it, I was like, yeah, yeah, they could, if they make this a good story, this could be really good. So I, I came into it looking, looking hopefully for a good time. And, and I heard nothing but good things once that trailer dropped. Yeah, I was, I was, uh, I had no info on, on Amber Mid Thunder. I, I miss, I missed Legion. I, I haven't gotten around to watching it yet. Um, but I've heard, I've heard it's, I've heard it's a good show. Um, so, but, so I didn't have any knowledge of her going into this. So for me, this was totally fresh take on her and, um, yeah, the, initially the, the idea kind of made me feel weird, but once I saw that trailer and saw like, like, this is a sci-fi movie that doesn't have a lot of actual like sci-fi in it, like his cloaking device and, and, and the laser light. But beyond that, it's pretty stripped down. Even his, he's got like a bone mask and a lot of his stuff is very, because when you think about it first, it's like, how is this super advanced predator going to get taken out by, you know, natives and these these French trappers? Was like, well, if you if you strip down the predator too and realize it's, you know, several hundred years in the past for him as well, his tech's probably not that advanced. I mean, the cloaking device is pretty advanced, but yeah, um, yeah. yeah. He, he still has some legit weapons. Yeah, yeah. That shield thing was so cool. Oh God, this is Although I will say it gave me like Batman Arkham City vibes because mm. it is Robin the bullet shield. I was <laughs> like, but it was it was cool watching him use that. Um, so let's let's get into overall feelings. Like, how did how did you guys feel about this? Just kind of in a grand, we'll we'll save the spoilers for a little, for a little, in a couple minutes here. But just in general, broad strokes, how did you guys? We'll start with Amr. How did you feel about about this movie, man? I love this movie. I I was in it from uh, from almost from the moment it started. Um, and what I really thought was good about it that a lot of the other predators don't do is they make you care about the characters real quick. Like, um, there's a lot of movie that doesn't have the predator in it and it was badass from the jump from there. Um, just getting into the, the, the lives of, uh, Naru, I think her name is, um, mm. getting to know her, her tribe, what she wants. Um, and also best top tier movie dog, Chess. Top tier movie dog, and that's always the plus. I I yeah. loved it. Probably some of some of the best action I've seen in the in the franchise. Um, uh, but more, it was more than just an it was an action movie that had a lot of emotion behind it, and I really really enjoyed that. Um, so I had a I had a great time. It probably was going to end up um, right now. It's in top ten of the year, probably for me. Yeah, I it's, it's rare with these kinds of movies that you find yourself giving a damn about the humans, like whether it's Godzilla or Transformers or previous ver movies like these, I couldn't give a crap about the people. I want to watch them get massacred by the Predator. And in this case, I was rooting for her to kick this thing's ass. Tushka, I don't know about you, man. How'd you feel? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I loved it. Um, I think overall, kind of as a movie, I would kind of give it like an eight or nine. Um, I wouldn't say it's in my top five five but yeah probably top 10 but also i've been able to go go out to a lot of movies but this was also on streaming so throwing a bunch of others but I, mean, I loved it yeah naru um i mean great character development with her uh especially with her brother kind of those interactions i love that she had the reservation dog <laughs> so we call yes. them res dogs but yes. i guarantee you that dog could have tore some tires up and would have chased people down you know blocks away from their houses uh youtube natives react they got a lot of like they have a whole episode on reacting to like res dogs but um but that's what it looked like and um even just like the visual storytelling there was um even though there was comanche language and english and french as well 
uh, there was so yeah, much it's more. Kind of hunt for Red October it a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but um, but just the the storytelling and really kind of building up some of the um, the ethos or the creed of the Predator, mm -hmm. along with the storytelling with everybody else. Uh, it was incredible and beautifully shot. Incredible uh, cinematography. Um, you know, I had like a couple of nitpicks, but it's just one of those things, man. If, it, if this is ever on, I'm I'm gonna sit and watch it. I'm never gonna turn away from this one. Well, it's it's great. It's, it's cool that you mentioned that because I mean, like you said, it is it is on Hulu. It's a who it's yeah. re was released on Hulu. So now I'm like, man, I can go back and just like watch this whenever, and I probably will. Like this is probably yeah. gonna go in the rotation of ones I watch on the regular. Um, yeah, I can't. Every time that dog was on screen. <laughs> inevitably i found myself screaming i swear to god i swear to god if he dies anything it's a res dog bro they're not gonna die they're not gonna die he's the new boomer from independence day it's like what about boomer yeah. boomer will be fine um no yeah i wonder if he's where the predators get the idea to have their own predator dogs i wonder if like they look at this one's <laughs> record and they're like you know what yeah. He saw this wolf right? and then he got his ass kicked by. <laughs> we need dogs. That's what we need. We need dogs. And then that leads to terrible things in movies. But anyway, um, yeah, no, I this this was such a I, I put this on when I got home from work yesterday and you know, I'm sitting there, got my McDonald's and I'm ready to because that's I'm a fat kid and I'm gonna eat McDonald's and watch movies <laughs> yeah. and and I, don't, nuggets, I, I think I wound up like not touching my food because I was just like in there. <laughs> I, like, I, I don't want to look down, man. Like I want to, yeah. I, I love getting to see like how just, I mean, these were, it was, it was a great representation of like, and it, this happens a lot in life where this language barrier creates this idea of, of ignorance. Right. Um, there's a, say what you will about the show. There's an episode of the big bang theory. I reference a lot where, um, they have a physics bowl team and the, he hires, he has the janitor come on to his team. Well, then suddenly the janitor answers one of these physics questions, right? And he's like, how did you get that right? And he's like, in Russia, I am physics professor in England, in England, in America, I am janitor. Go pull the bears. Like it was yeah. just because he has that language barrier. It was harder for him to get. And so, yeah. And we hear the French trappers refer to them in French as savages constantly. It's like, they were very intelligent. They were expert trackers and, and, and they knew, they knew those forests better than anybody. They knew these animals and it was through their own ways of understanding that she's able to learn how to combat this, this monster, which I think was really cool. I'm going to go ahead and just, we're going to throw this up now. Cause yeah. Yeah. There yes. we go. Let's get it. Yeah. Let's get it. Yeah. Yeah. So, real quick, speaking about the language and I just want to make sure I'm pretty sure this was the creative decision of the movie, but I want to make sure it wasn't my, my TV being stupid. They yeah. purposely did not translate the Comanche in the French, right? That, they, they left it. Yeah. Well, you, they don't translate it to English, right? There was some that was translated. I don't, yeah, I, I just don't think all very, of it was. The, yeah. the French in particular was like the accent was so thick. But I also have my subtitles on. Yeah. So my subtitles were so my subtitles were in French and my subtitles were in Comanche. Yeah. Oh yeah, really? I watched it. So I, I actually love the experience of not yeah. knowing what they were saying and not knowing what the Comanche were saying and just living in it mm -hmm. and kind of yeah. assuming, okay, I'm just I'm gonna be like yeah. her listening to the French and then just I'm gonna be uh, just a spectator being like I can figure out what they're saying even yeah. though there's no subtitles for me. What's that? That's how I learned when I was in college. I was taking Spanish and in, in college when you take foreign languages, a lot of times your teachers aren't gonna speak English to you. They're gonna speak to you in the language you're learning and you use the context to learn it. And that's kind of like I was doing a lot of the same thing. And that's why I mentioned earlier they kind of read a hunt for red October it where it was like you saw the Comanches speaking Comanche to each other and then they'd switch into English. It's like okay we've established they're communicating with each other. Now let's just hear what they're going to say. And every once in a while, the dialogue was a, a little, it, it was what it was. But, you know, um, there was a couple of times where it felt a little too modern English, but I, I'm willing to let it slide as just being a, a translation for the audience. Um, with uh, with the, the cinematography, like you mentioned, the cinematography on this thing, I think was the thing I noticed the most. Like this was such a, um, the, such a well shot Mm -hmm. movie like these the landscape shots the uh the use of the fog and and the and the natural lighting and things like that was was so expertly done i'm trying to pull up who the uh cinematographer is here on imdb jeff cutter who yeah. worked on uh 10 he worked on 10 cloverfield lane he's also worked on the boys 
um, and some other TV stuff here. He worked on uh, the 2010 Nightmare on Elm Street. So he's he's done some some budget some budget stuff, some smaller stuff as well. So it seems like he's got a pretty. But he had definitely had a, a, what I thought was like a real clear vision of how he wanted this to look. Was there anything else about this from a production standpoint that stood out to you guys? Tushka, you're not in your head. Yeah, yeah, because um, I think I mentioned it kind of in our Discord when we were kind of chatting. Um, the use of low light. Um, typically, like time of day, they do the golden hour because you can just kind of control the lighting a little better. It looks dramatic. A lot of orange. I mean, Michael Bay probably just goes to sleep with like a picture of a sunset and helicopters. I mean, it, you know, but it, but it's it's used so much, but it's an easy transition. Hey, the sun is going down. Hey, the sun is going up. This one, I really don't think we had golden hour. I think we had pre golden hour where it or they turned on the blues a little bit more, maybe yeah. some of the lighting, but it felt like we lived in 4 a.m., 5 a.m. for a good part of it. And then even the transition, I, I remember there was one scene. Um, I think it's whenever they were going to get her um it transitioned quite a bit and like but like you would get like two shots and then it clearly you would tell that time passed because it was just slightly darker or so you know and just slightly a little more blue so um their transitions was just it just felt seamless it didn't feel like it was hey this is day here's a sunset now it's night i mean where they kind of stayed to those thirds uh it was a smooth transition and the atmosphere just i don't know it just it just Felt like you were even more immersed in it maybe than some of the others where they feel like maybe they have to force it due to schedules and it could be because maybe they're working with a smaller crew than versus a, a yeah. cityscape and you know a street full of people you got to figure they probably had to help keep the production costs down low too as as well uh amaru what about you man? anything else that really stood out to you from a production standpoint um it, it was beautifully shot uh anything we talk negatively about this movie is going to be an extreme extreme nitpick because uh, right. somebody else had mentioned like the modern English language because uh, I loved it. I guess the other thing I would say is there were a couple of shots where it was the, it was so dark that I was like, I could not see what was going on. But that was few and far between. Um, other than that, I'm not going to act like I have I understood half of what Tushka, uh, Tushka said there uh, with the production stuff because I don't. I, I can like piece it together and figure it out. But no, the beauty shot, the one thing that will never, ever go away from me and for probably for the rest of my movie life, when they did the shot at the beginning, well, two things. One, that the the title card when they did mm -hmm. pray yeah felt yeah. exactly like an 80s action film yeah, it, yeah. i was just like okay they, we are in we are in uh the 80s we're in the 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 predator movie and that was dope but on top of that when you shot at the clouds and it decloaked i'm like nope nope <laughs> nope because i have seen nope now and i look at clouds differently from here on out uh so that's right? exactly what it reminded me of really really quickly but it was it was it was very beautifully shot I thought in the way it brought it back too. Yeah, it didn't yeah. just bring up the title card revealed and switch. It stayed right there, and I think it went right into uh, Tabe's uh, arrow. Yeah, yes. and then it came yep, down yep, to with the, the with the eagle flying right, uh, yeah. right coming in from the right, straight from there, and then yeah. straight to them. Too. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't feel like there were any like wasted shots on any of this, and and also from a from an audio guy standpoint, I thought the sound design on this movie was <laughs> incredible. Yeah. Watching it on my sound bar. Like I could just, you could hear like the, the rustling of the trees around you, yeah. the, the arrows and stuff whizzing by, um, the, God, when that thing roared, I, mm -hmm. I, I, oh my God, it scared my cat. Like she jumped like a every, foot. Every time air. you hear the, the predator click. The, oh, the, the, yeah. That's one of the best, one of my favorite sci-fi sounds. It's so good. Like that, the TIE fighter screech and Iron Man charging up his repulsors are like three yeah. of my favorite sci-fi sounds ever. Um, let's, let's, you know, Amri, you mentioned like anything negative we're going to say is going to be nitpicky, you know, getting it out of the way. Yeah. I mentioned the English, the, some of the modern English was, was a little too modern for me. Anything nitpicky you guys just kind of, that just kind of got you maybe a little bit. Um, I, I noticed some of the CGI, but the thing is, um, what was good about it was the, the one part I really noticed it was actually a really good scene where they were setting up prey and predator, where they went from the ants to mm -hmm. um, the the rabbit, to the snake, and then the like real first shot of the first predator kill. Like that CGI, I could tell was like, all right, that was a little bit of the budget, but it was a really good just yeah. storytelling shot of all right, we're yeah. getting to our predator now. Um, and then other than that, it's it's a, it's a fairly I'm not gonna say predictable, but it's a straightforward storyline. Mm -hmm. But it, it it didn't need to be any more than what it was in terms of that kind of storytelling. Um, uh, 
kind of knew when people were going to go kind of, kind of knew where things were going to, what we're going to head, but I, I, I loved it. Um, so if you want to call that a nitpick, sure. Um, but that was really it for me. Um, I was, I was intrigued, um, the, the whole time, even, even with those little, uh, things here and there. Yeah. Well, I'm actually kind of curious what the budget on this was because, because Hulu hasn't right. released that information. Um, and with the decision to put this on Hulu as opposed in theaters, which I think was actually kind of a smart decision. I wonder if because of the positive re reception this has gotten that if they do go ahead with a sequel, yeah. if maybe that one will then go to theaters, maybe they get a bit of a budget, bigger budget. For or, would, or could they still it. sneak it in? The, sorry. Or could yeah, they still sneak it in theaters? Yeah. I would have loved to see this one in theaters to tell you. The I truth. mean, maybe maybe we're coming to this air where they try it on the streaming. It gets enough buzz. Hey, one weekend, you guys go support it. And then Do you hear it. that, the Warner Brothers? Go. Do you Let's hear go. that, DC? I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. I don't know if WB is listening to anybody. By the way, <laughs> no. they've turned their notifications no. off. No, no, no. <laughs> their, their phone is on Do Not Disturb. Um, and uh, yeah, I, and I do wonder that too. Like. I also wonder because I thought the same thing about with like the uh, the She Hulk trailer. I was like, mm -hmm. the CGI really bad, or is it because I'm watching it on YouTube? So I kind of also wonder how would this look on a granted my TV's right. fairly decent size, but I wonder how this would have looked on a big screen because like I've seen the original Jurassic Park recently on a big screen, and the CGI from then still holds up. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, it just it does kind of make me wonder about that. But no, I mean, yeah, some of the CGI was a little noticeable, but for yeah, being the bear a, in some parts, yeah, yeah, you know, um, but yeah, well, it's, yeah, well, so too. kind of kind of with the CGI, uh, but then also kind of, I guess maybe jumping into a couple of nitpicks of mine um, with the CGI. Honestly, like this state of the you know CGI nation or you know graphics nation, like I'm I'm just a, I'm enjoying anything we get. Because all of them are overworked, uh, they're underpaid, and you're going to see a strike probably happen here in a year or so. And just like the writer's strike back in like what late 2000s, yeah. it'll suck for maybe a couple of years, but then I mean, then they'll get paid, and you'll see so much better content. The last 10 years, I feel like we've got some of the best content we've ever had. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like if for you know per the decade. Um, so I'm just appreciative of anything of it, and and with it being going to streaming then I can kind of suspend my disbelief on some of the areas as far as nitpicking as, you know, like, especially just like the water effects with the bear that that's just so hard to do like with fur and everything else of that nature. Yeah. Um, but it's I still loved it. It didn't take me out. It was just yeah. noticed it move on, you know, cause I still enjoyed it. Uh, my nitpick. Um, I wanted to care more about everybody else's death. Um, okay. I definitely cared uh, about, you know, uh, uh, Tibes. Um, I, yeah, Tabe. please, please let us know in the chat how we uh, properly pronounce Tabe that. or Tabe? Yeah, Tabe. yeah, maybe Tabe. Yeah, we're gonna Tabe. say it wrong, Tabe. kids. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, even though uh, you know, we're, I'm native, Choctaw is a lot different than Comanche, and that's what I realized watching this movie, too. It's like, oh, that's kind of similar than everything else was completely different, but um, you know, in course, you know, of course, more wise, Naru does not die, which is awesome. Um, but everybody else, I mean, it was just kind of hey, this is who this is, and they're gone. You didn't really learn too much about the name or maybe even their motivations. Um, mm. The French, you kind of knew a little bit about the motivations, but um, but with it being a tight 90 minutes and it being streamlined, uh, you know, I forgive it kind of in that aspect, but I do kind of wish maybe we had 10, 15 more minutes um, to add a little bit more or kind of embellish a little bit more on some of the interactions um, mm. so that whenever they died, we did care or we cheered it. Um, so like one of the... Uh, you know, kind of pack leaders as far as, you know, with the tribe um, where they were actually abusing <laughs> Naru or, yeah. you know, kind of wrestling with her. Whenever he died, you know, got a tag, I was like, yep, good. You deserve that, bud. That's karma, like within, you know, ETA, you know, 10 seconds mm -hmm. of what you did. So, um, but yeah, that's kind of my, my, my minor nitpicks. Yeah, I think it's fair, but also in a movie like this and also, like you said, with, with I mean, yeah, it, this thing runs just over an hour and a half. I'm, you know, I'm cool with the predators taking out some some uh, some some nameless drones. Yeah, I'm I'm fine with some uh, some nameless henchmen going down. It's fine. They're not even wearing name tags, so it's okay. <laughs> um, it's uh, I yeah I it, it my big I guess mine just kind of comes back to some of the dialogue. I, I thought the mm -hmm. ending, the way she takes out the predator, I was like, not super sure how, but also 
considering what I'm watching a movie about, I'm not going to try to inject too much logic into this. I mean, right. uh, we're talking about arrows that follow a laser light in a weird like wanted curve the bullet type circle i'm not going to try to to make too much sense of this it's like trying to make sense of the force it's like it just it's a thing you just let it go um any favorite moments for you guys any moments that like really stick out just that like latched on to you amaru anything from you uh from um, this the the fight with narutabe and the predator i thought that mm -hmm. fight that action sequence was dope as hell. It was probably one of my favorites of the franchise. Just that that's the one where you got the emotion, you got great action. Um, when he came in, when, when she distracted him and he came in on the horse and threw that spear into his chest, I was like, yeah, that I was in. Uh, I was in. Um, and I think one other specific kill that was dope is where he took the bear trap and threw it at old dude's head. Yeah. I got up and was like, yo, yep. that was dope. The action, the action for me, I think was top notch. Yeah, like from front to back, with those two scenes and that kill specifically, um, I really, really enjoyed it. Tushka, what about you, man? Yeah, um, I mean, I'm a huge dog fan. Um, you know, have have two dogs. One passed away in February. Uh, you know, R.I.P. Lou. But um, I got actually got my German Shepherd here with me. So, but with that with that res dog, he saved her life multiple times. And really was the MVP, like unspoken MVP. Um, and so and he's Lynch. basically like the Chiefs running back in that uh, Super Bowl that they won. I mean, Pat Mahomes got it, but really it's the running back that got, that got the win. Um, yeah. But yeah, 15, no, I, yeah, 15 minutes ago, I asked my dog, would you uh, carry a, an axe for me to kill a, a killer, uh, the most dangerous uh, being in the planet? Could you do that for me? Yeah, yeah, right. While I was watching this, no? my cat okay. looked at my cat looked at me while I was watching this. Was like, "You're fucking high if you think I'm helping you with this shit." I'm out. <laughs> do you know? I do want to mention though. I watched it with my dog, so my dog was chilling with me on the Good. couch, and yeah. she was enthralled. So I think she gives it five paws up, uh, and a you know four paws up and a tongue out. I think that's what she gives it as far as rating. But um, but yeah, no, the dog. I mean, just was beautifully used. I mean, yeah. it wasn't just like a trope or felt like it was just there just for cute moments. I mean, he was very pivotal to a lot of um, the story moving forward. Um, but, but but really the scene with the bear, that whole thing was incredible. Um, but, you know, her breaking the stick, it trying to get up, and then whenever it ran up, the dog misleading it to save her life and then letting her kind of reset. Um, and then that transition shot from the water down into that beaver dam. Uh, but yeah, just, it, was, it was a great moment. But, yeah, the dog, MVP. Yeah, I I I echo you guys. The action in this thing is 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 the star of the movie. That fight against the trappers in the fog, yeah, was up there with some of the best sci-fi fight scenes I've seen. And and to to the point, what I thought was so great about it is because the movie itself is so stripped down in terms of the technology, mm -hmm. they had to get like saw level creative with some of these kills, mm -hmm. like the guy firing the flintlock and it just bouncing off and going right back at him the throwing of the bear trap um the shield going through the guy into the tree i mean there were so many <laughs> oh my god yeah, that, that was my off, kill. takes his arm off i mean there's th these are some of the best sci-fi kills i I've, I've seen in a while i yeah. was yeah i was i was a bro every time there was fighting <laughs> happening on screen in this movie him um, him hooking the guy in the head, flipping him over and stabbing another guy while he's still on. I was like, all right, dude, you win, you win. Like and you know I what? Don't know how gonna do it, but shout gonna out to Tabe him. for getting impaled yeah. and still getting one more yeah. lick with that skull. Mm -hmm. Like he's like, I'm not wasting what little life force I have left here. Like he yeah, yeah. I really, really enjoyed the relationship between them two. Mm -hmm. Like they, the, the, the amount they didn't give it to everybody else, they spent the time to really, really build on the relationship they had with each other. Uh, and you could tell um, when, when um, uh, Tabe became the warrior chief or, or mm -hmm. uh, yeah. um, how much he wanted to be like, I, I, I know you tried, but you, I gotta be honest with you, you missed it. But I saw it, and just from front to back, um, that that relationship was a really, really also just huge part, uh, that a huge plus uh, for this movie. Yeah, Dakota Beavers, shout out to him. Yeah, I, I think I'm yeah. LinkedIn connected with him now. So what's up, dude? What's yeah, they're uh, <laughs> they're 
<laughs> Stupid. Their, uh, yeah, their 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 relationship was was absolutely yeah. fantastic. I love that moment of them, you know, when they're tied to the tree and mm-hmm. they're they're talking to each other through the moment. He she's talking him through what she's learned about how the predator operates. He's talking her through. No, you really are as badass as you say you are. I'm your older brother. I'm supposed to be an asshole to you. Like, that's my job. Like, my, I'm kind of doing what I'm supposed to do here. But talking her up in the end and saying, like, yeah. you're going to be the one to do this. And what I liked about what they did with this was 2018's The Predators did a lot of really cheesy, ham-fisted callbacks to the original Predator with, we got to get to the choppers, pointing mm-hmm. at the motorcycles and, and crap like that. This one did a lot of the same things, but they felt like they worked more. Like when he says, like, if it bleeds, we can kill it. Yep. You know, from and then that cross cut. The cross cut as well. Yeah. Him coming up out of the mud was, yeah. you know, the the use of the mud in general was mm-hmm. such a callback to the original Predator. When yeah. she came, when, when she came out of the mud the first time, I was like, okay, how in the world is she going to find out that she needs the to mud. not have heat i don't know how they're gonna do it and the great thing was it took me about two or three minutes after the scene with the medicine where i was like oh shit there it is that's how it's gonna work they're gonna somehow the this dude's gonna have medicine and then she's gonna see that he can't see him i the way they 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 unraveled that to to play with the heat vision i thought was was extremely smart uh, I, I thought the mud was out. actually a great use of a double cross because they could have easily mm-hmm. just done that again. And I think in the back of your mind, you're thinking that's what they're going to do. And when they drop the thing with the flower, you're like, oh, it's it's like they they subvert your expectations. And I thought that was a very clever plant. Yeah, I can't, I can't remember what it was like orange something, but yeah, yeah, yeah. The way mm-hmm. the and and for the for the folks at home, I guess. I mean, like. It, if you're, you haven't watched it, go watch it. But yeah, the orange flower essentially cools down yeah. the blood. Um, yeah, I, and I kind of wish, like, because I, I, I was watching that the whole time too. When are, when are they going to do it? Like, when are they going to introduce that? That's the reason why. I kind of wish they would have piecemealed some of that stuff a little bit earlier. So then you kind of see a little bit of a progression of her learning, you know, watching and learning, and then story, watching, learning, action, you know, kind of. But all of it was like right there at that end that just kind of. Felt like it kind of ran into itself. Um, but the line that the brother says whenever they're tied up, um, you're the one that catches everything I miss. Like that's that's what I love. Because um, because in that, I mean, I think no matter your relationship with any woman in your life, you know, whether it's a mom, a sister, uh, you know, girlfriend, wife, whatever it is, like it's it's always taking two people, right? I mean, in life, just period. Um, and so, you know, for for her, you know, to be the one kind of to catch what he misses and help him kind of end life. And I know vice versa. Um, I thought that was just, yeah, just kind of like a great, great dichotomy, but like really just um, message to kind of really impact that you can't do everything on your own. <laughs> you yeah. definitely can't. What's going to work? Teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost all our viewers now. Um, <laughs> I, I can't say enough good things um, about this movie. Um, any last final thoughts you guys want to give on 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 this thing, Amaru? Just last hurrah of praising this movie. I have to watch the original one again. Uh, I know my gut is going to tell me, but right now, depending on how that rewatch goes, Prey might be top of the line, number one in the entire franchise. Um, especially because I don't have nostalgia goggles on. I did not. I I wasn't alive. Uh, barely, barely, but I wasn't alive when the original one came out. Uh, uh, 80, I should know, it's 87, right? Oof. For the original? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're, I'm not in the showdown, so don't ask yeah. me. I need to know this. 87. <laughs> I was a year late, so again, I only watched it like two, three years ago, and it was great. Um, but I, I think, well, after, yeah, I think after watching it again, I, I think Prey, um, Prey did everything Predator did so well, but mm-hmm. added a lot of emotion that I didn't get from the original. It's probably going to end up being number one for me in the, in the franchise. Uh, Tush, what about you, man? What, 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 yeah. Man, I mean, go watch this. Like, seriously. Yes. I mean, like, uh, what are you doing with your weekend or your life? Like, go see it. Um, see the representation. The experience and culture that doesn't really get highlighted enough. Um, we're definitely getting more with Reservation Dogs being on Hulu as a show. 
um, and other, you know, First Nation or indigenous, you know, kind of groups. But just go see it, experience a little bit of culture that you wouldn't have known before, be more privy to it and, and maybe more understanding of each other in life. Uh, and then also it's a badass movie. Like it's like I'm actually excited to watch that uh, with on the Comanche translation with my headphones on just because of the sound design, like you said, uh, yeah. because it's just it's incredible. I mean, it's definitely that not a slow burn. I mean, it's a steady build, uh, but man, I mean, it, it hits. It hits. It definitely does. Yeah. Everything I liked about the original Predator, which is the action and the mm -hmm. horror thriller aspects this thing delivers on. But what this movie delivers on that. I don't think any of the others delivered on quite as well is the interpersonal connection, the emotional connection. I genuinely want these people to kick this predator's ass. I'm almost always rooting for the monster. And uh, this is the first time I found myself genuinely like, I want them to kill this thing. And, and I think that speaks volumes about they were able to take a still plenty badass movie monster and still finally make me look at him as a villain <laughs> instead of the hero of the movie, the one that I want to see win. Um, and yeah, I cannot recommend enough that I know, I know Hulu original movie go. This was a movie that should have been released in theaters. I get why it wasn't. Please go see this or go watch this. Yeah. What, what are you doing this weekend? I mean, yeah. really? Yeah. It, seriously yeah. it's it's hot it's out too hot <laughs> and one last thing because i didn't catch it until somebody mentioned it and this will go into maybe they will do another one i yeah. did not notice that that was the gun that they gave yeah. uh what's his name in in predator two, two. because two, yeah. uh, i was like why are y'all so why are y'all focusing on this gun so much like i see his name and then somebody yeah. mentioned it i was like oh okay that that was a that was a nice little callback to you that could plant a seed for like hey we might get well, Another did you, one to see how they get it back. Did you so, catch the little the little credit tease at the end? I did not. I did like not. the one who caught this. So if you watch, so Maybe. the credits are the yeah. credits are all done in the like uh, the that art style, that native art style. And yeah. if you get to the very oh, end of it, when right. the credits are done, there's a little animation of the tribe celebrating, and then three predator ships come out of the yeah. sky. Nice. So. That could just be fun, mm -hmm. or that could be setting up for like, no, there, there's more to this, and I'm on board for it. If there is, yeah, give me more good. As long as it's good, just give me more. Yeah, and, and show us predators in different regions, different areas. I mean, yeah. I mean, how, how how the different cultures kind of battled it, or I want to see going to 1800s and what does that look like? Yeah, yeah let's let's sure. see predators fighting in the Revolutionary War. Let's let's watch predators. Win, win the war for for the united states no don't do that yeah. let's not do that that's 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 too on the nose um guys i want to thank you so much for joining me for for, for reviewing this movie uh boggs is hasn't seen it and soul's a chicken shit and isn't gonna mm. see it so uh i'm gonna leave the floor open for you guys uh, uh tushka you said you don't want to promote a goddamn thing <laughs> no no I, I, yeah i was waiting for you to be like uh you know where, where can people follow you uh nowhere don't follow me i like privacy uh, i mean i love you all that are watching this uh hit a like hit a subscribe follow these guys they're amazing and uh yeah i guess i'll see you on the next native react video <laughs> Yeah, about that. Uh, <laughs> Amaru, what about you, man? What do you, what do you want to tell the people where to find you? Um, you can find me, Amaru Moses, Facebook, uh, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, but I also write for BitesizeBreakdown.com, where crew writers uh, do movie and TV reviews in 100 words or less, have a website. Also, I have a YouTube channel. Uh, this man was on my show, One Gotta Stay, a couple of weeks ago. Um, I give you four to six impossible choices to choose from, and you only get to pick one. Uh, the one he had to choose from was uh, between Obi-Wan, Darth Vader, Spock, and Data. You can only keep one character. The rest you're, of them have to go. It's a lot dead. of fun. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I got a lot of them out. Uh, but yes, Bite Size Breakdown uh, on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, and BiteSizeBreakdown.com. We got a lot of good stuff going on over there. And make sure you guys can let us know. Tell us about all the names we mispronounced. Tell us about all your favorite things that we're in this movie and are you looking forward to another one do it in the comments or on twitter all of our twitter stuff is in the description of this video which you need to hit the like button for hit subscribe check out our comic-con reactions our harley quinn watch along our stranger things watch along holy crap my hand is getting carpal tunnel from editing all the stuff that we're doing for this channel and uh you can find me on twitter at mr mike shea and we will see you guys again next time on off the wall there you go
Bye.